Hey, it's Jim, and I'm gonna. I'm really talking about the results of the testing of my uh, lady friend's BBSO2 kit that was uh, from Luna Cycle. I just I kind of talked about some of the specs already, but I'm gonna briefly grab those um, and talk about some of my uh, testing results. So again, it's it came out pretty clean. I think I upgraded the brakes to uh, cool stop pads. Um, I'm one of the. I'm somebody that actually. I, I'm fine with, uh, with rim brakes. Uh, I don't live where it rains a lot, so I'm not too worried about wet weather performance, but disc brakes, of course, are better in that case. Uh, these cool stat pads really help and make a big difference. Um, so, as I say, we, we did the 48 tooth sprocket, the Bafang mid drive system, and the controllers all contained in here. Uh, can't hardly even see the wiring on this side, wire wrapped into this trunk bag. Um, I didn't really like the quality of the Luna seat bag, and it it actually was uh, for my lady friend whose seat is typically lower than this had interference with the rack. So I got my little stuff in here for filming, but uh, it has a nice little LED indicator, so you can use that uh, with some charts to find your real percentage of battery life. And this is the 52 volt, six amp hour. Uh, mighty mini battery so it's a little over 300 watt hours really impressive battery back over here we got of course the Luna like I said the Luna system um, went with the thumb throttle option and the keypad kind of had a because this has integrated levers and I didn't want to replace everything I had to kind of finagle around this uh, have it set up for five levels of assist with lock mode and everything that's part of the standard suite with Bafang stuff. Um, converted miles per hour. Um, she's got almost 500 miles on it now. It's a five bar battery indicator. Uh, this battery indicator and this one don't line up sometimes. So that's just something I kind of, I trust the one on the battery and the vo actual voltage reading a little more. And this is the only spot I wish I could have gotten better. Um, just I, I wire wrap some of this. Okay, starting to fray a little bit. I need to heat that with some with a lighter. Uh, but this, I wish there was some better uh, ways to shorten this wiring up in here. Um, I'll probably try to clean it up a little. Oh, geez, I lost it. <laughs> I uh, I'll try to clean this up in here. I don't. I this kind of bugs my OCD side. But I think I put the weight on the other video. I think it's 44 pounds. So it added a couple pounds to the bike, but not really that much. So. I'm just going to briefly talk about some of the results of my testing and then I'm going to hop on the bike here, ride around, do a little hill climb and uh, give you a feel for how it rides. And I'll just hold the camera for a minute, um, I, you can see i got this other one on my chest. I'm going to hold the camera for a minute so you can get a little closer to the, uh, as it's riding to the uh, motor itself and how it's shifting. So um, we did one range test and I'll play a little clip from that. Um, but. My lady fun friend is 115 pounds. She was riding the bike. She got 26 and a half miles, and that was a uh, like in assist level one, riding pretty gingerly, a pretty slow pace because it was me, and my son, and my lady friend all riding, as you'll see. Um, so, and I'll put the they'll be at the end. They'll how much battery is remaining. She logged 18 trips back and forth to work, averaging 11 and a half miles each trip, at 17 and a half miles per hour average. So she's booking. So each of those trips, she had about average of 55% of the battery remaining. Though, in her experience on a really windy day, she didn't always have enough power to make it all the way back home. So on a daily use, um, she was getting more like in the 20 mile range rather than nearly 25, which she would really need to make the trip comfortably back and forth to work uh, and not have to worry about headwinds or you know what have you, or if she wanted to ride faster. I did a full range test myself and I rode it to work and I got 17.6 miles and I ran it out dead. Dead as can be. And it took three hours to recharge and it used 0.35 kilowatt hours of power. So I mean it's a small battery so it recharges quickly, it just makes sense. It's a 2 amp charger, nothing special. Now, the Luna Charger charger does have a fan in it. I don't know if that helps the performance of the charger itself. Um, and then, of course, the other place that this bike really shines is acceleration. As you'll see in a second, it flies. Um, especially, I mean, you could go with a small, even smaller ring, but with this gearing setup, I'll have to put on the screen, what's it look like? 
Um, looks like she's got a 32, probably 11 to 32. Uh, back there, but it, it really moves with this gearing. She's gotten a little over 30 miles per hour to top speed. Um, it's not like lacking in any department to me anyway. Um, but my zero to 100 foot uh, testing on acceleration, they'll put, I think I'll put a little video on the side screen of that. Um, she, 115 pounds, it took her 5.1 seconds. By far the fastest bike I've tested. Of course, it's a kit and it's kind of more powerful, but it really moves. And then for me, it took 5.3 seconds and I'm 175 pounds. And the one thing that means to me is it's, again, it's fast because, you know, a 60 pound difference in people and a barely any difference in speed. So it's dealing with the weight of the bike and the rider very easily. So I think it's, a, it's an impressive kit. So I, I really enjoy it. Oh, geez Louise, that was smooth. So I'm gonna ride a little bit right now. My understanding is it's pretty easy in the software when you get the programming cable, which I didn't do, to change the delay time and actually make it respond almost like a torque sensing mid-drive. But this is just cadence and speed sensing. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and leave this down here as I climb this hill. I'm gonna go throttle up this hill and it's a pretty It really does the trick. All right, so we're on the bike here. We're in assist level zero. Uh, the 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 Fang geared system is pretty. Uh, there isn't a lot of resistance, so I'll be I'll be showing the speed data here. You can see where I'm riding at. This is. You know, a comfortable riding pace. It's heavier than it would be normally, so riding a lot, you know, um, without the power, especially after if the battery dies, it just feels so dead in comparison. But here I'll just show you how the throttle works. Um, my advice is to make sure you have a little pressure forward on the pedals before you hit the throttle, that way you don't drop the chain. But you can see it, you can just feel how fast it gets up to speed there. And you can probably feel that little bit of jerkiness. Um, that's really, because you can see it's a very small, there's very little modulation in the throttle. So it's like, a, it's like an eight throttle. So you have to, it's pretty much all or nothing is the way I typically use it, which works out okay for me. Just know you're not gonna be able to probably with this throttle option, modulate the speed very well. But here I'm in, I'm gonna go through the assist levels. Assist level one. You, even at this speed, you can feel it. And two, you get a nice little bump. I, I typically ride in two and three. Three, this, I mean, this is moving, right? Now four, I really need to shift down. And what I typically do, I use the, motor, the brake cutoffs as a clutch. And I'll, I'll turn off the motor with the inhibitor real quick. Shift, uh, since I, di I didn't put shift sensing on this bike. And I think this works perfectly well. Um, so he, we are in a assist level four now, and I'm gonna hit into assist level five. You can just see it's, I'm still in the middle of the, I'm actually in a pretty high gear, and that doesn't phase it at all. And I, I came in and measured this hill earlier, um, and the one I'm approaching right now is about a 10 degree incline coming this way so I'm gonna go down to the bottom turn around then I'm gonna do a throttle only demonstration up the hill the throttle is hundred percent available um, regardless of what assist level you're in so to demonstrate that I'm, I'm gonna be in one because I might start pedaling up here 
But like I said, keep some tension on the pedal, that way you're, it doesn't spin out from under you, or spin the chain off. And uh, I'm just gonna, I'm just kinda, I'm right in the middle of the shift, so I'm right at fifth gear, um, and I'm just letting the throttle do its job. And this is, like I said, this is a, this is a 10 degree slope. This is not an insignificant slope. And you can see the speed we're easily able to attain and maintain. So it's definitely powerful. And hopefully that video before gave you an idea of how quickly the motor is engaging. And up on the top of this flat, I'm gonna go through it one more time and let you see how it feels in the different power nodes. And I'm gonna stay in the same, I'm gonna stay in the same gear I just climbed that hill with. So I'm still in the middle of the chain, in the, so, because it's a little hard to pedal right here, I'm going to give it a little bit of throttle. Alright, now I'm going to just cycle through. There's the second, third, fourth, and fifth. And really, it's, it outpaces my pedaling, but it can still, it's got enough RPMs. Oh, boy. Ooh, that was exciting. Um, it's got enough RPMs that it will uh, pull past where you can comfortably pedal it at, you know, even a pretty good cadence. So this is a good test. This is starting off in a little bit of incline, so I'm going to press like I'm taking off without any assistance. That way I don't lose my chain. Got a big truck coming up behind me here. Like I said, I'll demonstrate here me using the the brakes as a clutch. Uh, and I use the hy hydraulic brake lever uh, inhibitors. So there's a magnet that glues on the bottom, and the sensor glues on the uh, sticks on the top. A little self adhesive. Uh, those, it, it works really well. You can see all it takes is a small amount on the brakes to disengage the motor on either side. One thing I just noticed on this is that there's a little bit of a... Uh, I did a tune-up on this uh, not that long ago, and I'm going to have to readjust the rear derailleur again. I guess that brings up one thing to note with these mid drives, is they tend to little be a little bit harder, a little bit harder on your components, your chain, all, all your drivetrain components. So things will often come out of adjustment a little more often than they normally would. Just a quick little view of these. Uh, that's uh, magnet, and that's the. For the brakes, that's the magnet that came with the kit, and this is the adhesive sensor. So as soon as those brake contact, um, it shuts off the motor. Works good. Wrap it up! About time! Alright, I'm just wrapping up the re results of the testing here on this. Luna BBSO2, which I didn't know if I mentioned before, it's 750 watts. All the specs of the motor that I measured um, and my testing results, summary of them will be down in the description along with timestamps. So I, you know, I think uh, for a bang for your buck, these systems are really good, especially if you get them on sale and get a little bit of a break on the battery. It, it, it performs great, especially if you can, there's other battery options. I'm probably gonna buy myself a touring bike and for my daily rider, I'm gonna put one of these same Bafang systems on it. I don't know if I'll get it from Luna. Um, you can buy directly from Bafang too. I said it kind of weird, but maybe that's the way you're supposed to say it on Amazon. So I might go that route. I'm not sure, but I'll probably be putting this on another bike for, but for my lady friend, she loves it. She loves the performance, the range, everything works great. I really was skeptical on that small battery when I bought it because there's not very much detail on it. Um, but the batteries turned out to be, for what I need, I typically think about 15 miles, I, like kind of most incremental. It has to be like 15 or 30 for, for really to work for me because I 
a lot of times my trips are under 15 um, so it's easy enough to take a charger and recharge but if the range is high enough I don't have to so that's kind of nice so but I have no problem because even though this little Anderson connector is a little bit hard to pop off that's all you got to do is pop it off and and you cart this small battery that weighs a little over three pounds um, up uh, and charge it. I hope that helps you out, make some decisions on you know, which battery to go with and how it performs. It's, it's especially a good option, I feel, for somebody that if the bike, uh, the bikes available out there that are uh, complete bikes don't fit you for whatever reason by height, weight, geometry, what have you. This, uh, this kit route with the Bifang systems seems to be a really good way to go. So, thanks for watching. Take it easy. Catch the wave.